Further debate? A member for Scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Speaker. It's uh, my pleasure to rise today on behalf of the people of Scarborough Guildwood. And indeed, Speaker, we are in this together. The measure of a society is the way that it treats its most vulnerable. When I last rose in this chamber, I spoke about the urgency of the moment. I shared the devastating news that two residents of Seven Oaks Long-Term Care Centre in my riding of Scarborough Guildwood had sadly passed away from COVID-19. And in just a few short weeks, Speaker, the situation has become even more dire. 22 people have now passed away at Seven Oaks, and my heartfelt condolences to those families as they are grieving at this time and the staff who care for them. But the speaker, the situation is even more distressing. 82 more confirmed cases are in residence there, as well as 14 confirmed staff. This outbreak is not limited to one facility. There are outbreaks in 82 long-term care homes peppered across this province. All of us in this room are impacted by this virus. Today, we, not, we must stand together and do all that we can with a spirit of urgency to protect our constituents and especially those who are vulnerable. The elderly have given so much to our province and to our communities, and we feel this loss keenly. If we are, what we are doing is not working, we have to stop and we have to rethink. We urgently need to do more to protect vulnerable populations and the staff who care for them. And I see that the province is taking steps, such as doing more testing of these populations, but we need to do more and we need to move much more quickly. Preventing the spread of COVID-19 in these facilities will directly translate into lives that are saved. Residents in long-term care facilities do not have the same options as everyone else in the general public to protect themselves. Public health advice to stay at home, to self-isolate, to cough in your sleeve, to do all of these things are meaningless in those facilities because they are already at home. They need the staff who care for them where they live to be healthy. And the staff doing rigorous testing they also need to feel protected. So personal protective equipment is essential when working in these facilities, not after there is an outbreak, but every day. Many facilities are struggling to meet their staffing needs. Many workers have already become sick themselves, and those who have not, they worry about bringing this virus home to their families. Staff who relied on income from working at more than one job at multiple sites will feel the impact of this virus right in their bank accounts. In addition to increased funding for long-term care sector, the government has set aside a billion dollars in contingency funding. And this funding is designed to respond to the pandemic. It should be proactively used to protect people in long-term care and other congregant settings. In order to attract and to retain staff, the government should immediately and retroactively implement hero pay for all staff at long-term care homes by giving them an immediate raise of $4 an hour. The high risk that these workers take on in order to provide the care and support for our society's most vulnerable should be valued and rewarded. Speaker, we also need to listen to those working in home care because it's a system of care, and home care workers are equally as exposed because of the intimate work that they provide to people in need. And so they too need personal protective equipment, and they urgently need a system of testing so we know what the risks are in those home care settings. The, under the Emergency Measures Act, Speaker, the province has the ability to appoint a single person 
who is responsible for vulnerable people in this province. And I urge this government to use the tools at their disposal and appoint that individual and make it known to the long-term care, the home care, the community care, the congregant living settings and group homes that are in this province, as well as those who are in transitional housing and emergency shelters so that vulnerable groups have the protection that they need. And finally, Speaker, I want to talk to the students of this province. And I know that um, my colleagues on the other side have spoken very well to the importance of those in our universities and our colleges. One of the things that we have to be careful about is unintended consequences. And usually from May to May is when the leases are signed. So we need to make sure that our students are not caught in further debt because they cannot honor those leases if their schools move to virtual learning in the fall. This is, these are just some of the things that the government can do that it is in the capacity of the government to do during these times. And yes, Speaker, we can and we should do more as urgently as the situation of COVID-19 demands. Thank you, Speaker.